In this lesson, we're going to solve quadratics by completing the square. Um, and if this is your original problem, this is your quadratic, and you're asked to solve it, probably the first method that I would actually use to try and solve it is factoring. And if I can't factor this, most likely I'm going to use quadratic formula because it works 100% of the time. However, completing the square does come into play in a couple different things. If you are going to get into graphing and solving um, conics, which are circles and ellipses and hyperbolas, you have to use completing the square in order to graph these things. Um, also, as you start to go through this, if you're asked to solve something and graph it all in one problem, completing the square actually does a nice thing for you as you're going through it. So let me walk through this and I'll show you what that nice thing is that actually helps you with your graph. So completing the square, uh, when I first started teaching, somebody showed me, they called it the magic hat. Uh, the magic hat is really just an organizational thing that you'll need to, um, to do this math to set up the uh, completing the square. So very first thing is the completing the square is all going to be based on this B value. So your B value is negative 6 on this. So the negative 6, I'm going to put off to the side for a second, and I'm going to make this little shape here. That is my magic hat. And the magic hat is going to really, all it does is it organizes the pieces that we need for this. And to get into the hat, we're going to divide by 2. To get out of the hat, we're going to square it. And every, each of those two values that we're about to, to get are going to play a role in what we have here. So we'll take the negative 6, sign included, and we'll divide it by 2, which is going to get us a negative 3, and square it gets us a 9. So what that does for us is it organizes this completing the square. So we're going to take this quadratic, and we're going to rewrite it. And we are going to find a value that we're going to be able to plug in here that makes this factorable into the exact same two factors, which really creates a perfect square out of it. We're going to kick the 8 out, but whatever we add on the inside here, we need to counter it with subtracting. Because it is an equation, so if we add something to a side, we have to counter it by subtracting the same thing to a side. So that way, as if we added a 20 here, we need to counter it by subtracting 20 as if we did nothing. So that 9 that came out of the magic hat is exactly what's going to create a perfect square for us. So we add 9 here, which means we counter it by subtracting 9. So let's see what that does. This, what multiplies to 9 that adds to negative 6, well, it factors into the exact same two factors. So we'll just kind of do a real quick one here. This factors into x minus 3 and x minus 3, which is exactly the term that's on the inside. So we can skip that step, and it's the exact same two factors. That's what it's called completing the square. You created a quadratic that was a perfect square. So it's x minus 3 squared, and that term will always be the piece inside. And the piece on the outside is what you added to create your perfect square. And then over here, we're going to uh, add those two together, which gets us a minus 1 equals 0. Now, depending upon what you've learned for graphing, this is actually vertex form right here. That's the nice thing that no other form will give you. If you're talking about vertex form and you're looking to graph something, you have to do the negative b over 2a and then plug in that x value to get your y value for your vertex. Here, if you're asked to solve it and graph it, it gives you the vertex along the way. You don't have to do additional work. So your vertex is um, the opposite of this, which is 3 and negative 1. So this is your left and right shift on your quadratic. This is your up and down shift on your quadratic. And you have your vertex ready to graph. So we'll continue solving, though, because we're not looking to graph this. We're going to check it with our graph and show how everything matches. But we're going to... Um, we'll finish graphing in a second, so we'll check it with the graph. So we'll add one to both sides. We're going to isolate the square. So that's going to get us an x minus 3 squared equals 1. To get rid of the square, we'll square root both sides. And that'll get us an x 
minus 3 equals plus or minus 1. That creates us two solutions. x minus 3 equals 1. x minus 3 equals negative 1. We'll add 3 to both sides. And we have x equals 4 and x equals 2. So these are our solutions to the original quadratic. So if we plug them back in, we would get a 0. Or graphically, those are our x-intercepts. So we have a vertex and x-intercepts. And if you recognize your quadratic, that 8 is your y-intercept. You have a lot of information all with one process here. So we're going to go to the graph, and we're going to check it. So we're going to turn on that graph. We're going to zoom this in a little bit. And according to our vertex form, we should have a vertex at 3, negative 1. Here's 3, negative 1. And we have solutions of 4 and 2, which match that. And if we pulled the graph up high enough, we would have a y-intercept at negative or at positive 8. So everything matches perfectly, gives us a pretty good feel that those are our solutions, vertex matches, everything is good. All right, so let's do one more. So second equation. Same math, same everything. We have x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. Again, if I were just solving, I would try and factor it, or I would use quadratic formula. If I'm solving and graphing, completing the square works fantastic. So, organization-wise, we're going to take the 10 and magic hat, which is cheesy, but we'll have a tendency to remember it that way. So we'll divide by 2, square it. So divide by 2, it's a positive 10. We'll divide by 2 and get a 5, square it get a 25. So the 25 is what we're going to add to create our perfect square. So x squared plus 10x plus something. And then we'll kick the negative 4 out and we'll subtract that exact same something. So what comes out of the magic hat out of the box is 25, which immediately tells us what this factors into that what multiplies to 25 adds to 10, 5 and 5, so that value is exactly what it factors into. This adds up to negative 29 equals 0. It gives us our vertex of negative 5, negative 29, in case we're graphing, and we'll finish solving. So we will bump the 29 over. And that'll get us an x plus 5 squared equals 29. We're going to square root both sides to solve. To cancel away the square. That'll get us an x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square to 29. I would look to simplify this as best I can, but... 29 doesn't have any perfect squares that mix into it, so we're still getting two answers. So x equals oops, x plus 5 equals the square to 29, and x plus 5 equals negative square root of 29. We'll add the 5 or subtract the 5 over. So that'll get us x equals negative 5 plus square root of 29, and x equals negative 5 minus the square root of 29. So if we want exact answers, that's it. But that's not very easy to check. So taking that and plugging it back into the original is kind of difficult, so the graph is a great way to check it. 
we have a y-intercept at negative 4, we have a vertex at negative 5, negative 29, and we have x-intercepts at something. So I got to figure out what that something is. So I'm going to make these approximations, and I would plug these into the calculator and turn them into decimals. This one is going to turn into about um, 0 0.39 when we round it. This one will turn into about negative 10.39 when we round it. And we're going to graph it. So we'll pull this graph over and okay so let's see if we can make some sense of this. So we zoom out a lot because we have a vertex that's way down at negative 29 and that value right there is a negative 30 so that seems reasonable that that value is sitting at a negative 29 and the x value is negative 5. That seems possible. Uh, let's do, zoom in a little bit. Our y-intercept is supposed to be at negative 4. So there's our y-intercept at negative 4. Our first x value, x-intercept, is somewhere between 0 and 1, but not even a half. So that seems reasonable. And then our other one is supposed to be at negative 10. So not even negative 10 and a half, so that seems reasonable. So our x-intercepts are a nice, quick, easy way to check it. Our graph, everything looks great. Our vertex matches, our y-intercept matches. I feel good about every single piece that we have. So those are our exact answers. Those are our approximations. So that is a little bit of an introduction to completing the square, how it connects to a graph, how you can solve it, and kind of the value to it. Uh, it is definitely needed when you do conics, graphing ellipses and circles. So it's not something to totally blow off, um, but it, and it does kind of help you when you're graphing something. All right, and that's completing the square.